All right, traders, I am back again with another video. And in this video, I am going full blown Mod Squad on you with the Link Mini Afro. So you remember Link from Mod Squad with the big old Afro. Well, I'm sporting the Mini Afro today. So going at that, not what uh, many people want to see in my family, but that's what I'm at right now. But anyway, guys, what I'm going to be doing today is going back on the Ichimoku um, market review. This is basically a review from the past Sunday. We had a couple uh trade setups and trade opportunities we wanted to look at most of the trades were set up for the pound pairs so we're going to talk about i'm going to take you back and let you see what we were talking about it's going to tell you how we got into the trades what we were thinking about and what trades we were looking at and what eventually happens on those trades so i'll take you to from past to present and let you see why it's so important for us to have our weekly webinars members just look for trade alerts all the time but basically when we talk about our trade setups that we're discussing during the weekly session that's more important than you getting a trade alert because guys when we talk about the trade setup we're discussing each and every detail about that trade possibilities that we're looking at and how you can get into the market so you won't get an alert from me at that moment because you're already going to know what to do so i want to show you guys what it's all about and let you see some of the things that i'm looking at when i'm looking to take a trade so let's get started with this All right, guys, before we get started, I want to just give you a little word of encouragement, which comes from Philippians 4, verses 6 and 7, which says, Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which, is, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. So what I want to tell you guys is no need to worry because when we worry, we, we create the illusion that our problems are bigger than our God. When we choose to trust God, even in the midst of challenging circumstances, God's peace rushes in and chases away the worry and anxiety. In Jesus' name, I pray to you guys today. Thank you very much. All right, guys, so the first pair we're looking at is the Cad Yen. And um, we don't have Ichimoku on the chart because a lot of these trade setups basically were based off of pure price action and levels. And I want to show you those levels and show you what the trade looks like now. Um, and I'm going to go back and review. But basically looking at this Cad Yen, you could see we had a trend line that we drew down here, a lower trend line, and we had an upper resistance level. The trend line was sloping to the upside with a flat upper level, which made this um, an ascending triangle pattern, basically, because the market was basically basically compressing as it moves higher and higher, but never breaking this, this high, which made this, again, uh, an ascending triangle pattern. So when the market got to this level, it was very important for us to understand what was happening here. And at that point, we were on this green candle and then you could see I talked about the market and where we wanted to get our opportunities. So I like to go down to the four hour time frame, went down to the four hour time frame. My thought was that the market would correct, move back up into this area and then move back to the downside. So I basically was looking at um, the market doing something like this. Let's see here. What are, where are we looking for? looking for the market we were looking at the market doing pretty much exactly what it did here now we didn't know how far we said we could get up into this area so we could have went there but then we figured we get it to this point all right and that's where we would see the market move to um, so when we go back and look at the video we'll talk about these levels because these levels are so important so on the daily time frame we already see the upper level and we could see the resistance point there and it it honored that level and then we could see the structure level here this was the structure level where we look for the market to pull down to so 
um, when the market pulled down, we expected it to move down to this point. And that's where we are now. So I want to take you back, have a look at what we were talking about at that point. Right now, we're going to see what the market does now because there's a lot of news today. And I think most of it pretty much happened. But um, we want to see what's going to happen on this level. All right. So this is going to be the next level for us to pay attention to. If the market can blow through that level, then we'll probably see the market move even closer down to this trend line somewhere. All right. But if not, we're going to see it bounce around here and maybe eventually break to the upside. But let's go back and look at the video. Um, see what we were talking about in our live webinar session, which we held on Sunday. We hold these sessions every Sunday. So want to let you see what we were talking about at that point. And then we'll go to another one. So look at this. Here we go. So CAD yen daily time frame, we're pushed up against a very good level again. So and then we also got to basically if you look at this whole thing, this could be becoming a major um, ascending triangle pattern. So with that said, don't even look at Ichimoku right now. Look at what the market's showing you, which is this. Um, I think we're going to see more of this. before a possible breakout. So I'm looking at the market shorting in this area. All right. So if I'm looking at that, I want to go four hour look to short this. I'm kind of late with my entry. I should have been short way up here, right there. Should have been short right there. So at this point now, maybe we correct back up to Kijinsen or back up to this zone. So if I'm thinking correction, I'm thinking this now on the four hour time frame. I'm thinking maybe we crack back up into this area and then we could look for the short. All right. So that's what I'm thinking. Possibly. I don't want a short right there. Now let me go back to daily. And we're inside this box. And again, there's a support and resistance level here. But I think we violate that because you could see we violate these levels basically when we're in a, in a um, consolidated ranging market and this is a consolidated market really a bigger consolidation so i see us dropping through here just how are we going to get into the market all right so i got to watch this a little better because i could still get in here without a pullback but i have a nice little move i think we're going to see a little correction then catch the wave all right, guys, our next pair that we're looking at here is the Euro Swiss franc. So we're looking at the Euro Swiss franc, also another ascending triangle pattern, pretty much because you got this lower trend line here in the market compressing and an upper flat resistance level. I pretty much make this into a zone, but the zone's pretty big because of the wick. I like to use wicks and make those as zones because the market can move anywhere in there. But it happened to be that this is a very big wick right here. Um, so the zone is super big, but where the market was on Sunday, we were sitting on this candle here. So we're looking on this candle and we expected the market to pull back up into this area. So our main focus was this upper resistance point, which is a nice structure level. Also our lower fractal level. We expected the market to pull up into this point and then we're looking for it to move back down towards this level. Now, we also had a four hour fractal level that we were looking at the market pulling up to also. So on this day was our session and pretty much we pulled in the first level and then dropped. But now we're back up to this point. So had you taken a trade here, now you're probably in, in a losing trade. But at this point, you should have been able to lock in some profit and not take a, a loss on this trade. So when you go back to the four hour time frame, pretty much looking at we looked at the market pulling back into this area and that's where it pulled back to um when we pulled back to this area we dropped a little bit and when we get a drop like this not that much profit but still depending on where you took the trade you would have been into about actually only 22 pip profit all right but now we also could have walked this zone and also looking at the lower level so when we talk about walking the zone, it all depends where the market is. If, the, if we're using this zone and the market goes to the middle of the zone, we put our short entry at the bottom of the zone. But if the market moves all the way to the upper level of the zone, then we put our short entry at the bottom and then we, uh, we put our sell stop in the middle. Sorry. And then we let the market move. So had we taken the trade in the middle because of the market moving all the way to the upper level, 
then we could have been looking at a possible another 26 pip profit then to let that come back to you and be basically negative 20 you'd be all pretty much negative 21 i'd be out of the trade at this point but when i get into some profit i don't really want to let the market come all the way back and and take me out for a bigger loss than the profit i was was able to capture but sometimes that's really really hard so on the daily time frame you could see where we are at this structure level and we reject it now so this is our second opportunity this time we move to the upper level now we did move to the upper resistance point let me show you um, because what happened here was this point tipped right at it all right and then it came back at it again so we're sitting on this level we want to see if this level is going to hold now so we're going to look for this level to hold and for um, price action to lead us to the downside, quite possibly back down to this area. Now, if we close above this zone, then I think we're probably going to head up towards the upper point. But let's go back and look at the um, video again, see what we were talking about with the Euro Swiss franc. Every couple pairs that I just showed you, we had a, a level like this. I just showed you about three or four of them. Look what happened when we got to those. And look what happened. It dropped big. So I'm still looking for this to pull back down to this area before I really get interested in it because um, there's no real fractal to pull back to. I mean, there is right here. And if we do pull back to this level, look to short the market again because we want to short back down to that low trend line here. So we could pull back into this area and then see it short back to the downside. Ichimoku's not helping me here at all. I'm just looking at price action, really. I'm not even paying attention to that. Um, I'm looking for the market to pull back to this point or wait for it to get down to here. If I go to a lower time frame, again, there's a lower four hour fractal that I would look at, but it pretty much lines up with my daily. It's just at a lower point now. And you can see we rejected here, but we do have thickness. So we may be seeing the market correct even more. And also mark your four hour and daily flat levels. And see where they line up as, because you can use those too. But when you look overall on the big picture, we're still looking for the market to get back down here. Just we're just talking about a little move into this area, one of these points where we could get short with this. But when we think overall, we're thinking about moves that extend all the way down. When we think little term, we're thinking about how we're going to get into an area where we could get into the trade. But overall, we're thinking about the move where we could make the most profit. And that's that trade that we're just talking about getting short in this area. All right, guys. So another one that we were looking at is this Euro pound and we're looking at it. Going to talk about the trade setup. A couple of these were kind of easy price action setup, basically because of what we saw was the big rejection here. So we were on this day at this rejection point and I'm going to move this for a minute. You could see this big candle, big giant rejection. Usually these are very strong indications that the market is rejecting that level and you could probably count on the market moving to the downside. Now, there's nothing guaranteed in trading. So, but yeah, it's a, it's a nice, um, reliable signal and something that you could probably put your hat on. So what we talked about, we were at this point when we were talking about it on Sunday. And then the market opened and then dropped lower. Now, my suggestion was that we may come back up into this area, maybe bounce off of the upper trend line. But if not, I suggest that we take a trade short here at this point. So this would be my my sell stop right here. All right. So with this sell stop, the market was up here and dropped to the downside. Now, we could have went to the four hour time frame and probably got a better entry than we talked about on this daily time frame. But the market did violate our level and we got a good drop down to this lower point here. Um, so those that were looking at this trade setup that we discussed would have given you a possibility of a, at least 122 max, 122 pips max. And it was kind of an easy setup because of the rejection candle at our trend line here. And pretty much you could see this is basically a symmetrical triangle pattern market getting compressed with highs and lows and we've just bounced off of the upper resistance point with a monster rejection. I feel that we may, we could have covered a little bit here before we dropped, but instead the market went straight back to the downside, violated this level here and continued to the downside. All right. So where we are now, probably going to see some kind of a correction and then maybe continuation back to the downside. So I'm not really looking at, 
at an entry right now because we've already discussed our trade. We already had our opportunity and we need to wait now and see what the market's going to do. Um, let's go to the four hour real quick. Yeah. Um, another, another pattern. We rejected this level super hard. Now, just because we rejected this, um, this is more of a symmetrical triangle pattern. And with this big rejection here, it doesn't mean we can't still push up a little higher. So let me go to the four hour. Now, see, I could still draw a four hour fractal and we may push off of this four hour fractal, but I don't think that the whole move, I think if we do push off of this four hour fractal, we may push back up into this area. But I think ultimately we're not breaking this and I think we're going to drop. So I'm thinking daily time frame. We do push back up in here, maybe. But I don't think we break this. So I don't have a good trade right now. And if the market decides not to break past this level and comes right through here, I'm going to go short. I'm going to look for, for a short opportunity. This low right here. Because this big old zone, this is a monster zone. This this wick. And it's too big for me to trade as far as walking the zone. So I just want to see what what results from this rejection we might see more push to the upside before finally coming back down. If we come straight through and break this level, I think that's where we see the short. And you can see you'll be breaking a bear fractal at that point. So again, you could get a correction back up to here again. So all I'm thinking is maybe something like this. I'll draw it out for you so you could see what I mean all the time. So where we are now, maybe we just see this and then this. Maybe we get a little bit more and then we break. That will be the daily time frame uh, level. And then we would be looking daily time frame. You could see what I'm talking about when we break that low. So we still could push up. But I don't think we break that. So this type of trade, I don't trade. You can't trade every single trade. And I'm not going to trade long right here just to get from here to there. I'm not going to do that. All right, because I think the, the level I need to be at a resistance level or a support level. There's no support level here. There's a fractal here and we kind of bounced on it. Are we going to bounce on it? The four hour fractal. All right, this right here. So for me, the safer trade is this this area or seeing if we're going to violate this point which is the daily time frame. All right. All right, guys. So the next five pairs I'm going to talk about are going to be all pound pairs. I'm um, pretty much, um, they were all doing the, pretty much the exact same thing. And they were all showing us pretty much good opportunities based off of the, the current candles, which were really rejections at support and resistance levels. Um, you could see this is the pound. This is the pound Aussie. I got a zone here. You can see this zone with the two red lines here. And then this is where the market dropped down to. And on Sunday, when we had our session, we were at this red candle here. So we were looking for an entry here. We did think that with this big rejection off of the level and the zone being the bottom of the zone being here, we could see more downside, but we wanted to figure out how to catch this trade. So when we looked at it, we went to the four hour time frame and we boxed this level in here. So when we box this in, um, we pretty much had a breakout of the level. We wanted to trade the long breakout of the level and here the market broke out. We decided basically when we box the market in and I believe we boxed this in on the hourly time frame. I believe let me go back. Yes, I think we boxed this in on the hourly time frame. And when we were looking at that, because here's where we had our highs and lows, we were sitting on this candle here. So we were inside this area here and we were looking to see Either the market's going to break to the upside, violate these fractal levels or break back down to the downside, continue to violate bear fractals and continue to go even lower into this zone, which is pictured right here. We'd go into this zone lower or down near this low. All right. So that's that was what we thought could happen. But we said if the market violates our, our box, because I pretty much like the trade, I like to box the market in when I'm not sure what it's doing, when it's giving me highs and lows and not really doing anything else between it. And pretty much when we break above that higher low, 
So we broke this box to the upside. We enter the market at that break here, uh, really the fractal level, and we continue with this trade. All right. So at this point, we have a couple good opportunities. Now, the market gave us uh, one, two, three other trades to get into as this moved higher off of the one hour time frame. So you could have got into this three more times with um, our fractal trades. But looking at this right now, so based on our break here, you could see we're pretty much into like the max area was about 328 where we moved up to. All right. So members, I preached this out to you, showed you this trade setup, talked about how to enter this market. And this, I didn't need to give you a, a setup when it happened because we already talked about it beforehand. So talking about these trades beforehand to me, and we're in the same room together, we're all discussing this and you have any questions, boom, I can pop those off, get those answered for you and whatnot. So I believe this is much better than getting um, trade alerts because you already know what we talked about, the levels that I'm looking at and know what I'm thinking about getting into my trade. So when you see this, you're able to ask me questions if you're not able to understand what's happening. And I'm going to be able to tell you what I think or what we could possibly do. So this was the four hour move. Um, the four hour also gave us two other entries, currently giving us another entry to get long on this possibility. But there's some things that I really am looking at. We're at a structure level for a resistance point. And when I go to the daily time frame, we're pretty much ranging. So I'm not sure about that level. We're, we're, we're kind of ranging. And I, when I say ranging, I always like to think because we're in between this level here. So the market is pretty much um, boxed in. Where is it boxed in? It's boxed in this level right here. Pretty much right here. Right? Yeah, that's where we are. All right. So that's why I say it's it's flat. It's ranging or pretty much whatever you want to say. I think that's more of a range and we're sitting in between levels. So we may be pushing back up to that point. We may get a little correction and then push back up to that point, but we need to see what's going to happen from here. We got a little bit of an indecision candle here, so that's going to mean a lot to us. We want to see what the market's going to do here. Um, this candle is about to close in another another 15 minutes, so pretty much going to probably be what it is. At this point, we're probably going to see a little correction and then maybe back up to the upside again. But let's go and look at what we were talking about on Sunday and how I told you we could catch this trade. All right, so let's go look at this. Big giant move off a of pound Aussie. Yep, this is gonna probably correct itself also. So let's mark the lower levels. I'm gonna mark the support and resistance level. You could see that. And I based it off of this and I'm gonna make this into a zone with this lower level here. Now this made a new low, but I want to keep this zone until I see what that level is all about. And that zone really, I can mark another level down here. This whole area has a bunch of support in it. And I can mark it different ways. I would be looking for a long, a long opportunity here. All right, just price action wise. I think I could get a better entry than like this because right now this is my this would be my entry all right but I believe definitely we could get a way better entry than that so we're looking here we got distance here um, we broke this high to me I'm looking here a close above that level my stop loss is gonna be this wick but if I go to the one hour let's see what that yields us so we got consolidation here, which is nice. So again, another area where we could think about long is like this. A couple ways to get into this, and I think we're gonna see a good move to the upside, but just don't like the news. The news could change that, but look at this big thick cloud. All right, real thick, we're going back up. We're getting ready to break Keatonson. So what I like to do now, I'm gonna trade outside the box. Think about the course. We box everything in, all right? So this is the box right now based off of this candle and everything trading inside of it. Close above it. Probably that's where your entry is. Stop loss below the, the fractal level. All right. We created a fractal here. We close above. We're going to look for our long at this point. And then we could even range down here for a little bit. All right. And what happens a lot of times you range here a little bit. 
the market stabs at the low again and then takes back off to the upside. So guys, basically, I box this in. I look for the long when we close up above the box. When you go to the daily, if you stay on the daily, your entry is way up here. If we stay go down to the hourly, we're looking at short long right here in this area based off of what we just talked about boxing it in. Yeah, this is pound news from the Brexit. Let's go to that weekly that you're saying. Let's go to the monthly. Yeah, we're still got this level, though. It doesn't matter about that news or not. I think this level is going to be relevant. It's relevant on all time frames. So I'm thinking we could still push a little bit lower. But I think we're still going to see this market hold here. All right. And remember, news pushes the market not for days. It pushes the market when that news happens. And then things could change for a little bit. But I think this level is going to stay relevant. All right. All right, guys. So another CAD pair, I mean, another pound pair with the pound CAD. Pretty much all these pound pairs are doing, were doing pretty much the same thing. So on Sunday, we were right here with this candle. All right. And a major rejection coming off of a, um, looking like pretty much a symmetrical triangle pattern again as we compress the highs and lows. So this was another opportunity because we I didn't feel that we would really violate this lower level because we had a lot of news coming up this week. And I, didn't, I think um, I was thinking maybe the level won't be violated for real because, um, you know, a lot of indecisive traders at this point because there was so much news to come up this week. So and also seeing the monster rejection here led me to believe that this level may hold. We may see the market pull back up into that to this area. And so it did. Now, what we were looking at, um, again, I believe we looked at this. We went all the way to the hourly time frame to get our trade because looking at the four hour. Yeah, we had a box here. But I believe we went to the one hour to look at our entry. So the same thing, you could see where we were boxed in right here and we broke the box again. Another entry here. The market again gave us one entry, two entries, three entries for long opportunities after this entry. So this entry was our our break above this level. So when we break a level, we want to break the previous fractal with it. So we broke this level. All right. Our entry would have been our entry was at this point. This was where we put our buy stop because we break the box. This confirms we break. So we get the close. We get the level. We trade that buy stop there. And we set in this trade at that point, which would have given us a pretty good trade opportunity with another 375 pip trade setup that we discussed on Sunday and giving you that opportunity in just three days. So, again, I feel that these are much better than trade alerts because you're in here. We talk about it. You can mark this up on your charts. You can ask me questions and boom, I can tell you what you want to know. And what I'm thinking about with the trade. Now, this market came back to another structure level right here. As you could see, this level, this red line, when we violated, we pulled back to that level and we were able to get another bounce and then another bounce here to give you a trade. But also, you had more structure levels that you could have bounced off of on either time frame, the one hour or the four hour time frame. All right, so the four hour time frame here actually really didn't give us much except this one bounce here off of the structure level. So if we if you didn't catch this trade the way we trade, you know that you're definitely shooting for this target right here to catch another entry. And it did give you that. Now, when we look at our one to one target, did we fulfill the one to one? Using the daily time frame, our one to one target is going to be there. And there we pretty much almost hit the one to one target. We didn't hit it at this point yet because one to one would be right here. So that would be a B equals C D. All right. Because you have one, two, 
three, four. And let me get rid of that real quick. Almost every trade we take is going to be at a three level because we always look at this for trading. When we're trading, we always look at counting this as your one. So I'm going to draw it out real quick. And also, let me get this. One, two, and we always get in a trade at the three level, at this level, and then we shoot for this level. How do we get into a trade at the three level? Basically, we get into a trade at this level because it's always going to be a support and resistance level for us. So it's always a level that we see ahead of time. So when the market gets there, we start counting this as possible three level. And when we see the price action and the market move away, we use the price action and the level. Sometimes this level will be a zone. We're able to um, zone walk it. So we're able to walk that zone or able to trade just the zone area and get into a good trade. But usually we're getting into that type of a trade. And if we go to a lower time frame, so we're on the four hour there. If we go to the one hour, you may see one, two. Now, this was a break of the level. So we really weren't trading at three. But the three level, we we kind of know where the three level is going to be at support and resistance levels. Now, we could see it clean on the daily time frame. All right. Well, actually, this was four hour where we marked this where we marked it here, but you could also see this on any time frame because you're going to see this end wave on any time frame. And this is part of Ichimoku wave analysis is with the end wave. Um, and also you don't even have to know Ichimoku analysis to know that that's a, uh, a one, two, three, um, four or ABC, a B equals CD or ABCD. You don't need to know that it's, um, Ichimoku analysis, but some things that line up with our trading lines up with Ichimoku analysis that people don't really even understand or know. So I could be saying, hey, you trading at one, two, three, four, or A, B, C, D. And really, that's also the same thing as the N wave in Ichimoku. So just some things that you really might not know. Let's go to the hourly time frame. So I'm talking about this N wave structure. And you could always see it. So a lot of times we take our trade at the three level. This would be one. I'm going to go the big level, but the one, two, three, four. But then a bigger one would be one, two, three, four. So you could see how we follow this and we look for the target will be one, two, and then three. And then one to one would be right there. We made that target. Now, if we go to the the bigger move, what would be... Um, one, two, and then this would be three. That would be our entry right there. And then we go one to one. Now we didn't even, we didn't get one to one and the market pulled all the way back to the entry level again. And then, then, then it got to the one to one. Probably at that point, you probably locked in some profit or got out of the trade. All right. But if you hold your trade on the four hour time frame then you're able to probably get most of this profit depending on where we got in. So if you didn't catch this area and you caught this trade, then you're catching most of this here. But let's go to the video and see what we were talking about at that time. Another big drop on the pound, but you could see my support and resistance level. Mark your levels here because this is a descending triangle pattern. Now we're going to watch because we do got a big rejection here. And the rejection is showing us that we're probably not going much lower. All right. So we may pull back into this consolidation area. And when I go, I'm going to move to the four hour. Don't have a great entry on four hour yet. Again, I could box the one hour in. We we'll just box that in. I love to box it in because usually it goes that way. When I do, if I, like if I incorporate more Darvis box trading, we would box this market in would be boxed right here. So on, if I'm using Darvis, a Darvis box, and this is only a hourly time frame, so it's not that big, it looks big. We would be looking for the market to break one of these levels. So if it breaks the low, we know it's probably continuing more to the downside. Darvis box, if I break this high, I'm pr pretty much moving to the upside. So when I look at that on the daily time frame, there it is. That whole box. 
all right so that's basically where we're looking I, now i'm telling you i'm going to get into a trade if i'm going to get into a trade i'm going to box get into the trade on not the darvis box but pretty much this box of what the market's doing price action wise we're inside this mother candle I mean, we did get outside of this candle, but I'm going to use the highs here because we're not closing above these highs. So if I close above, we're probably breaking this box and moving to the upside. All right, that's pound Swiss franc. That's pound CAD. All right, guys, again, so we're talking again, another pound pair. Most of these pound pairs have big monster rejections on them coming at the end of the week this past week. And when we opened up on the market, we were able to take advantage of these rejections. So we're going to look at the pound Swiss franc, see what we were talking about at that point. Basically, you could see the big rejection here. And on the daily time frame, another basically an ascending triangle. I mean, uh, yeah, an ascending triangle pattern because we got this upper flat level, which would be our resistance point and this lower trend line because we got three touches here. So I'm going to consider this a, an ascending triangle pattern and we're getting compressed again and we're shooting back up towards this level here well at this point the market had violated this low down here but when it violated it made a big candle with a monster rejection so with that big rejection i was like nope we're going to be able to get a bounce off of this and trade this to the upside so when we go to the four hour time frame you could see what we were talking about now the four hour time frame didn't yield me a great opportunity let me see where i got in on this I took this on the one hour also, I believe. No. I'm not sure exactly where I set this trade up on the four hour time frame, but on the daily time frame, I had it boxed in and we wanted to catch this rejection. So let's look at the video, see what we're talking about, because we know we wanted to catch this rejection and we pretty much did because we were looking to go long at this point. And when we looked at this, let's see what we were talking about on the video. Here's pound Swiss franc. Pretty much the exact same thing, I'm going to guarantee you. These are all going to look the same. Big rejections. They all are in triangle patterns, as you can see. This one is a, an ascending triangle pattern coming off of the support level with the highs here and rejecting here. I will go to the lower time frame. Now, we do have a fractal here. Watch this. Let's see what the market's going to say, because if we say let's trade the fractal, let's trade the fractal if we get the short. Right. But and my thought is, even if we get a short. It's not going to be much. We're not. Get, I don't believe we get through there. So taking a short here. Watch to see if the market does this instead. It does this. It doesn't break this level breaks above comes back and honors this like that as we've seen previously all right so look for that i don't believe you're going to see this whoops i don't think we see this move down farther past this level but I mean, I could be wrong. I can't. I got to trade what I see happening at that point. And that's what you guys got to do, too. Be careful of that news, though. All right, guys, another pound pair. One more after this. But this one is the pound yen. Again, it looks like another. Basically, we could call it. It got into a nice ascending triangle pattern, but you had an upper trend line here. And this isn't an ascending triangle pattern. Sorry, this is to be more symmetrical from this point. All right. But then you had a trend line here. Um, I didn't draw anything here because we were pretty much past that point. We didn't come down to that level. We were honoring this level here. And I also what I did was make this into a zone. All right. So I made this into a zone using the wicks. Um, the market didn't come all the way down to this lower level. It came down to this point here, touched this lower zone. I wanted to get into the trade because I wanted to trade long here, moving up to this level here. So we did think that the market could drop even more and go down to this point. But at this point, if it didn't drop, we wanted to get into the trade. We pretty much boxed this market in again. You can go into the four hour time frame and we boxed the market in and watched the market break out of the level. We entered the trade at that point. And then you could see 
we're, we pretty much were shooting for this upper level here. Now the market again currently is giving you an opportunity to go long here. Um, we have a four hour, when does this candle end? In another six minutes. So we have, an, we have a four hour inverted hammer at a nice structure level so we can look for a long there and we're shooting for this target here. So I'm gonna see if we could get a better entry on the one hour time frame. So basically what I would look at on the one hour is we're looking at this support level. I'm gonna box this thing in, box this in here. And this this really extends a little farther than this, but I'm using this zone as what I wanna look at. Um, and I wanna see a close above this level, really, because we haven't closed above this candle right here in the past three candles. Now you did have a, you do have a bullish engulfing here that you can also just set up your trade at this point. You got six minutes, five minutes left with a stop loss slightly below. All right. Because you'll be below the structure level. And then we're shooting for basically this upper resistance point of this um, trend line here. That's what we would be looking at now. But before that, we were discussing already how to get into the trade. I'm showing you now how I will get into this trade now. Um, I don't know if you're going to be able to catch it now because by the time I put the video out, we're going to be past this point. All right. But what I'm looking at, what we were looking at again was this level and we wanted to get into the trade here. We boxed it in on a four hour time frame, had it pretty much boxed in, got into the trade and captured all this move here. All right. So now we're at another structure level. Again, you could see the structure level on the four hour time frame. Um, not on the daily right there, but on the one hour also. All right, so we got a nice structure level and we're sitting at that point and got a bullish engulfing for a possible long to the upside right now and again shooting for this target here. So possibly, an, um, what are we looking at? A possible a possible 55 pips or so with a stop loss of about, about 20, 26. All right, and then I always tell you, so 26 stop loss, all right, another big 52 um, target for your first target. So that's where you take about 25% off the table. Take 25 to 50% off the table at 25 at that 52 um, target. And then you shoot for this overall target here. All right. And then if the market fails you at the one to one, which is your one to one risk reward, and then it comes back, don't ever be break even. Never be break even. People tell you to trade and be break even. Why would you? be break even when you can make a little profit. So you would move your stop loss up a little bit above your entry. So you would not be break even, you would be break positive. Never break even, break positive. All right, if you're gonna say it's gonna come back to the same level, then why would you break even for nothing? So don't ever break even. All right, but if you trade that way consistently, you're gonna, if you're a 50% trader, you're gonna probably more than likely always be ahead in the ball game, all right? So we took 50, we take 50% off the alpha, the one to one risk reward ratio level. We take 25 to 50% and then we let the rest run for our overall target. And we can continue to do the same thing, um, which I'll explain real quick. If I got again, that 52, that 26, um, pip stop loss would have shot us for a 26 target, which would have been about here. So we make that 26 target. If the market moves, we go for another 26 target. We're going one to one, two to one, and so forth. And then you take 25% or 50% off the table or however. But if you keep doing that, you're going to be ahead of the ball game. All right. But let's go back and look at what we were talking about on this video, because when we looked at this, we were here on this day and we pretty much were thinking pretty, we're going to see a rejection. I mean, well, not a rejection because we already showed the signs of rejection, but we were thinking about a long trade here. So let's go back, look at this, see what we're looking at for that long trade opportunity. Pound yen daily time frame hasn't reached down to this level here. And you can see again, another triangle pattern. I'm looking at the market pulling back to this level. We're in a flat market pretty much. You could see Jimugu back and forth. Look for price action to get us back into this area. Now, I could make this into a zone and probably would give me a level, which would be right here. Let me see. Trend line, where's my trend line? It would give me a level that would probably be here. So I would be looking at this as my zone. 
my support zone off of the um, triangle pattern. And you can see we're in that pattern. So I think you see the market push down into this area a little bit more. All right, so when I go four hour, we haven't really changed yet. We are bouncing off of that level real well, but we haven't really shown a break of these highs. All right, so I'm gonna box this whole thing in. Let's go to hourly. See, you haven't broken above these highs yet. So basically we're sitting in between these levels right here. We're sitting in between this level right here. We need to see what's going to happen. Now, if you want to be, if you want to trade, I wouldn't do this right now because it's not a real confirmed like level. I mean, it's a confirmed level, but it's not a confirmed like ranging point. I wouldn't short here to try to get back down here and then go back up this way because I don't think that's what's happening down here. I think the market's going to probably honor this a little bit, but I don't believe we get all the way back here. All right. But I mean, we could because we got this as a big zone and we could break that level and drop down to here. So I need more time and I need to see what the news is going to do through the week. I'd be I'd be afraid to trade that. I'd trade that on a low time, lower time frame, if anything. All right, guys. So the very last one we want to look at is the pound New Zealand dollar. So pound New Zealand dollar um, daily time frame here. You can see this is pretty bearish at this point. Um, and what we were looking at, I didn't have any lines drawn here. Let's add Ichimoku because we did have it on here at that point. And we were, oh, we were down here. This was the rejection. So we were kind of um, trading against the overall trend or the intermediate trend, basically. And what we were looking at was short term because we had a big cloud here that was thick. And these thick clouds tell you a lot of things, okay? Thin clouds and thick clouds tell you a lot of things. It all depends how it is when it's thin and how it is when it's thick or whatever. So where it's thin and like this and moving to the downside with angulation, that signifies a trend. But if it's thin like that and flat, that signifies nothing. A flat market. Let me see if I can find a good thin area like this. That wasn't real good. But here you could see this is a flat market right here with the thin cloud right there. Um, not too many really thin spots on here. This is a little bit thin, but it's sideways too to top it off. So that's important, all right? But if it's thin, if it's like that and flat, but thick, because see, we're coming off of a level. Thick clouds to me mean a lot when I see them. Look at this thick cloud up here. The market moved higher off of that thick cloud right there. And then the market moved higher off of this thick cloud right here volatility this is the market possibly going to move higher off of this thick cloud right here all right you could see how thick that is so we expected the market to move higher so what did we think of we kind of thought this would be our target our Kijinson. now when we looked at this we went to the lower time frame i actually think i went to a one hour time frame and looked at this all right this um tr this flag pattern and a breakout of that level now, we were also talking about this could be a point where we need to break through. And if we did break through, we we're going to see continuation at least up into this area. Well, the market violated all through that and we moved even higher. But we were looking at just correcting just because we figured the market could move up to this level here from here. So we were down here and we figured we could catch the move up to this point, our Kijinson, because of the thick cloud and what that was telling us. A lot of volatility with a rejection here. So that was what we were looking at and looking to do and catch. And at this point, an entry on here would have yielded you a possible from the box. Another possible maximum 350, 359 or so. All right. And again, I feel these are much more consistent and better for you to learn instead of with trade setups and me just sending this out to you with a trade alert. All right. And telling you to trade this. Now, I think we're going to see this market. So I'm going to remove this. 
we haven't broken any levels to tell us that this the, the structure is changing on the market. Span A is still aiming to the downside, which is strong. And if I stay on a daily time frame, I'm looking to still short this market at this point on a daily time frame. If I could go to a lower time frame and see how I can enter this short. Um, we're in a box here. We could violate that level. Again, this is my daily level. So again, I'm still thinking we're going to see the market continue the trend to the downside. All right. This is just a correction here that we were looking at trading the bottom here, correcting back up. But now we're back in the line. You got a crossover that's bullish. Your future is bull. I mean, a crossover that's bearish. Your future is bearish. Chiku spans below price. Every sign on this is bearish and the market is moving to the downside. All right. Probably shooting for. Let's see what kind of trend lines we got here. I'm going to go with this inner trend line. So I'm going with this right here. And we'll be, we'll be below that level. So let's move down here. Go to the next relevant. And we're going to be below that. And I don't like that. Don't like that. So just looking at this, we don't have really a horizontal level that I'm in love with. Maybe I'm trying to see what levels, what lines up here. So this level is a good level of support and resistance, as you could see. And then probably this level here, as we got this here, here, we got here. We've got here and here, and then we are there. So we rejected that point and moving higher. Now, where could we go even farther to the downside? This is one point, all right, because you have this, you have this, this, and this. And then another point would be, I'm going to mark this low. Slight area there. Maybe... Maybe better here, somewhere in here. So that's another area could see the market drop down to. But basically, we want to look at what we were talking about on um, Sunday. But again, I'm thinking if we violate this level here, because angulation on Tinkinson and Kijin is straight to the downside. Span A is aiming to the downside, and we're probably going to see more downside movement. So that's what I'm looking at with this currently. But let's go back and see what we were talking about at that point in the market. All right, next one is the pound New Zealand dollar. Big monster drop right there on the daily. I mean, on the one hour and on the daily also, you could see this monster candle, but big rejection on the bottom. Um, my trend line was violated already. So I'm just looking at this rejection level going to just trade the price action more than likely we if we're going to continue we're going to see a correction and we're going to mark the daily fractal level so i'm going to mark this daily fractal level at least correct back up to that point before dropping again so quite possibly seeing a move back up to that point which would then give me on the four hour looking for a trade back up into this area all right i don't have my entry yet Let's see if i got it for one hour so one hour is slight trying to give me an entry. Mark these highs. All right. And then mark it like this because these lows. I don't believe that it's going to really stay in a good flag pattern because I've seen it drop and then break higher. But really, we're not doing anything till we break this high, really this major high major low major high lines up with the one hour fractal level but that's not real strong all right now if i'm trading one hour i i do look at that and i want to see if that's going to honor it but just because it's there doesn't mean it's going to honor it because when you got to break levels to change direction all right we broke this level to change direction because this was a one hour fractal you would have been looking for a long trade here but instead the market broke that's how you knew what to do right here that's how you're going to know the same thing to do in this area. 
because if you're going to look for a long, I mean a short, it would be one hour here. If it violates that level, it's going to be basically the same thing that we talked about. It's not going to always do this, but it could. But it's always going to do this. It's going to break through that level. So either it's going to honor it and then drop or else it's going to break it and then maybe honor it there and then long again. All right. So you got options here. Just be patient to catch the trade. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Basically, be patient to get the trade. All right, traders. So hopefully this stuff helps you out. Um, really wanted to show you what we look at every week. So being a member, you're able to come in and go to these live sessions and we talk about all the Forex pairs. Um, we're going to be doing our um, crypto sessions and we're looking at stocks. And guess what else? We trade futures too. All right. So I'm not blind to just the Forex market. Um, I really don't like to trade a lot of the uh, crypto market myself, but I still look at it. All right. And I will trade futures and um, stocks. So that's what we're looking at all the time. And those are the things that we do. And we have, have sessions for those um, assets. So if you really want to join us and become a member, just visit us at www.fxatoneglance.com. Probably above your head right there. Well, above my head. <laughs> All right. So till next time, guys, have a great one. God bless. So long.